Ali Force One is Funspot Atlanta's first major coaster, and its announcement was quite a surprise. This small park was known mostly for go-karts until this big investment put it firmly on the map for roller coaster enthusiasts. As one of only a few people who have ridden every hybrid and wooden coaster ever built by this ride's manufacturer, RMC, I was certainly excited to see what this one would bring to the table. Is this brand new coaster any good though, and how does it compare to the rest of RMC's back catalogue? Let's find out. I'm Rollercoaster David, and this is my review of RE Force One. Ari Force One starts with a small dip out of the station that leads into a sequence of two small airtime hills that give some very brief minor air. A chain lift then takes you up the 155 foot tall lift hill. The largest drop in the ride is 146 feet at an 83 degree angle and it reaches a top speed of 64 miles per hour. It features four inversions and the ride is approximately 100 seconds long with a length of 3,400 feet. At the top of the hill, you're sent straight into the ride's first drop, which gives some decent airtime on the way down. You then pull up and twist slightly to the right before flipping rapidly to the left and completing an inverted half loop in an element called a Raven Trust Dive. Next, you hit a speed hill before entering the ride's long zero G stall under the lift hill. The next element is an outside banked airtime hill that takes you soaring over the ride station as it makes a left turn. Next, you're sent into a powerful double up airtime sequence. At the top there's a large drop before the signature arcade roll, a fakey airtime tilt to the left, a tight right turn and a corked barrel roll inversion. After a quick left turn and small dip, you're sent into the ride's finale of a quad down sequence of airtime hills. After this is one final hill that sends you into the ride's brakes. Now if I'm being honest, the day I rode Ari Force 1 did not start out that well. We arrived in the morning to find the ride closed and were told that it would not open all day. Despite this, we did see the ride testing, so we had a little hope. We went to Six Flags Over Georgia instead, and whilst there, we messaged the park to find out when it would open, only to be informed that it had just started running that afternoon again. After a pleasant day at Six Flags Over Georgia, we headed to the park in the early evening and thankfully, the ride delivered everything I wanted from it. It's not the longest ride in the world, but it sure does pack a lot in. At 155 feet tall, this is actually the sixth tallest iBox coaster that RMC have built, and as such, the first drop is good, but not as impressive as on some of their larger rides, so if you're expecting a drop like on Iron Gwazi, you may be a little disappointed. The first element, however, definitely does not disappoint. Raven Trust Dive may be a weird name, but as an element, it's awesome. You actually twist slightly to the right before snapping round to the left in a dive loop, then hitting a speed hill. It's a great fun way to turn the train around and I wouldn't be surprised to see it repeated in future coasters. On paper it doesn't seem that different to a traditional dive loop, but when you ride it it feels much snappier. The speed hill that follows also gives some brief but brilliant airtime. The Zero G stall is fantastic, with perfect weightless floaty air and silky smooth transitions. It's a real highlight of the ride, and I've said in other reviews that RMC have properly perfected this element in a way that other manufacturers just can't seem to match. The outside banked airtime hill over the station is another great moment with strong sustained ejector air throughout. I actually prefer this particular element in the right seat as it feels like you're being thrown out over the entrance more and you get a great view over the rest of the park. The double up is fantastic too, and kind of remind me a bit of the start of a Kuge, which if you know me is very strong praise. As you crest the second up, there's a surprise fall off that's actually larger than you might expect, once again giving some great air, but it's the next sequence of events that really make this ride special. Put simply, the arcade roll is amazing. It's taken so quickly that whilst on paper it's a zero G roll, it feels like something else entirely. The fakey airtime tilt is also a bit like a wave turn, and the fast low to the ground right turn pulls a sustained 3 and 3 quarter G's before you're flipped around in another inversion. This sequence of four elements seems to happen so quickly when you ride that it's almost hard to just take in what's happening. It's a blistering fast sequence that gives you an amazing rush, and yet it still manages to flow smoothly from one element to another. The ending of the ride may be a bit controversial though, and I've heard some mixed opinions from others about it. After the final barrel roll inversion, you have a sequence of six airtime moments yes, back to back yes. that are all very strong, and you kind of have to ride them a bit defensively. 
Now a lot of people find the sequence a bit too much, and it really is super aggressive. Almost like a barrage of airtime that's thrown at you. Personally, I still enjoy it though, but your mileage may vary with how much you're able to tolerate it. Taken by itself, I normally wouldn't like this rapid fire sequence of hills. When you add it to the end of this ride, I do feel it kind of works. That's another thing to me that's truly outstanding about RE Force 1, it's pacing. The sequence of elements ramps things up all the way to the end, starting with the less intense elements, then getting progressively stronger and stronger all the way to the finish, when it ends with a real flourish. The airtime at the end is strong, but it's what the ride's building to. It's like a smooth progression of intensity that means that the ride never has a dull moment and never feels like it's just coasting or slowing down. Could the ride have been better with one or two larger hills rather than the six short blasts of airtime? Perhaps, but it might upset the all-important pacing and that gradual build-up in intensity. Overall, the ride design has a real uninterrupted flow to it. There's no unexpected jerks or awkward changes of direction. One element merges neatly and smoothly into the next. On the same trip I rode Wildcat's Revenge and Steel Vengeance, and the sudden jerky transitions in some places on those coasters are really not something I'm a fan of. My favourite RMC coasters have none of those elements, and so this is definitely one of my favourite RMCs. Despite the aggressive nature of the ending, I found that the ride still was rewritable, and did so many times during the day. I think that's a measure of its balance of forces prior to the ending, and the gradual progression to it. So, we've had lots of day rides so far on RE Force 1, and it's been awesome. I've had 10. You've had 10, I've had 7. Yeah. Unfortunately, the nature of making videos means you actually have to take time to shoot some footage. But uh, that is the nature of it, and it's an awesome ride. So good, so good. But right now, we're about to experience our first night ride on it, which should be even better, hopefully. And I have beer. I'm gonna icy. I win. With a slight beer buzz on, those night rides were quite simply amazing. It's a fantastic ride. So we just had nine back-to-back -back night rides on uh, RD Force One. I'm, I'm a little bit tired now. <laughs> My legs hurt, but it was absolutely amazing. Uh, it's such a good ride. There's so much airtime. I absolutely love the arcade roll. It is just fucking insane. It's so good. Um, yeah, the air time is very, very strong. Like, everyone complains about the ending hills being, like, I guess... A bit much. A bit much. <laughs> which, which they are. It is a bit much. But, but brace yourself for the ending. Yeah. And you enjoy the rest of the ride before it. It's amazing. Top tip is ride in an even-numbered row, because then you can brace yourself yeah. against the row in front. Yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> a, an awesome end of the day here. But for now, uh, Ari Force 1 is an absolutely amazing coaster. Get out of here and ride it. It's so good. It's really good. I should probably mention a bit about the ride's theming too, although it doesn't really have all that much, apart from a scattering of some generic space stuff. I do, however, like how the coaster looks, with the bright white paint and red and blue track really making it stand out. The painted metal structure also makes the ride look more like a traditional wooden coaster, and I think it fits in nicely with the rest of the park. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the ride's name, Ari Force One, which comes from the owner of the fun spot chain, John Arnie Jr. Supposedly, the park was initially in talks with the Atlanta Hawks baseball team regarding naming the coaster after them, but they went for the Ari Force One name after these fell through. It doesn't sound quite right to me, but I guess if you're going to be spending $13 million on a brand new ride, you can call it whatever you like. Operations at the park were generally pretty good as well. The park was extremely quiet when we went, with only a handful of people going round, so they were only running one train. But as there was rarely anyone else in the queue, they let you stay in your seat or move around to an empty seat without having to go around to the station again. It was this way we got so many re-rides in such a short amount of time. The ride ops also gave us one final bonus night ride after the park should have officially closed, which is always a nice touch. So now the big question. How does it compare to other RMCs, and where would it sit in my ranking? Now, this gets harder and harder to decide with every new RMC, as generally, they're all really good. I previously made a top RMC list a couple of years ago, but I reckon I'd probably change around some of the places now after I've gained more riding experience. On my most recent trip, I rode Steel Vengeance, Wildcat's Revenge, Twisted Cyclone, Outlaw Run, and Storm Chaser, and I would definitely say that this was my favourite RMC coaster of the trip. 
Unfortunately, I only got two rides on Wildcat's Revenge due to weather, so don't really feel able to do a full review on it, but based on those two rides, I felt Ari Force was a far superior ride. I've also made my thoughts on Steel Vengeance pretty clear in previous videos, and if anything, this trip further solidified those thoughts, pushing Steel Vengeance lower down my personal ranking. Ari Force 1 just flows so much better than Cedar Point's flagship ride, as there's no awkward jerky transitions and it definitely doesn't overstay its welcome. So it's clear to me that Ari Force 1 is a top tier RMC, but just how close to the top does it get? It doesn't beat Hakuge, my personal number one, and I'd probably still put Iron Gwazi and Zadra above it, so I think it's probably there in the number four spot for iBox Track. Just in front of Medusa, Wicked Cyclone and Iron Rattler, it really is that good. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and my take on this wonderful coaster. As always, I'd love to read your comments to see what you think and let me know whether you have any thoughts or questions on the ride. I've been Rollercoaster David, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in another video very soon.